Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm a meditation teacher in Kansas City, and this is my podcast, Sharpening the Mind. The teachings in this podcast are free of charge, but of course, if you feel compelled to make a donation, you can do so by clicking the link in the show notes. Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm going to talk about the essence of Buddhism today, the essence of Buddhism. That's the title of this talk. So at the Rime Center, we do a chant every Sunday called Supplication to the Buddha. I believe that within one part of this chant, we really get at what the essence of Buddhism is. And that is as follows. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Blessed One. I'll read that again. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Blessed One. In her book, Buddhism for Beginners, Thupten Chodron, who is a, a nun in the Tibetan tradition, she echoes the same idea with just a little bit different wording. She writes, Abandon negative action. Create perfect virtue, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. I've been reading Buddhism for Beginners lately. I haven't read this book before, and I'm helping to teach a class based on it, so I'm reading it. Sometimes I think it's good for us to go back and explore the foundational teachings and maybe see if we can see them in a new way. Stop doing bad things, do good things, get some control of your mind. If we can stop doing things that cause harm, then we can make the world a better place for ourselves and others. We can work toward cultivating virtue by learning to develop attitudes that are rooted in love, compassion, joy, and equanimity. When we subdue our minds, we can put down our emotional baggage to see the world clearly, and we can start making better choices. This can help us be calm and peaceful and also to stop making enemies out of everything all the time. Thupten Chodron goes on to say, The disturbing attitudes and negative emotions such as clinging attachment, anger, and ignorance are the real source of unhappiness. Since these are based on misconceptions about the nature of reality, they can be removed from our mind stream. So what's that message? It's that a lot of the things that make us unhappy come from ourselves. Our own self-obsession and emotional baggage These are things that take a lot of joy from us. They steal a lot of our joy. But we can learn how to let go of these things, or at least not to hold on to them so tightly. We practice Buddhism by working on what's called the three higher trainings. These are ethical discipline, meditative stabilization, and wisdom. Or live an ethical life, train your mind, and learn to see things clearly. That's how I describe the three trainings. Each of these is divided into what we call the Noble Eightfold Path. That's because uh, Buddhism really likes lists, lists with numbers of things, I think. So, ethical discipline consists of right speech, which is using words that are true, kind, and appropriate. Right activity, which is taking actions that don't harm others. And right livelihood, which is obtaining a living through ways that are honest and not harmful. Meditative stabilization consists of right effort, which is the determination to counteract disturbing and negative emotions. Right mindfulness, which is countering both laziness and excitement in our meditation. And right samadhi, which is training our mind to fix one-pointedly on an object. Wisdom consists of right view, the wisdom that realizes emptiness and interconnectedness, and right thought, the mind that can explain the path clearly to others and is motivated by wishing for freedom from suffering. The essence of Buddhism is also contained in a teaching called the three principal aspects of the path. I told you there were a lot of lists, right? 
The three principal aspects of the path is usually a teaching in the Tibetan tradition. And it is determination to be free, altruistic intention, which is also sometimes called bodhicitta, and wisdom realizing reality. Thupten Chodron says, Initially, we must have the determination to be free from the confusion of our problems and their causes. Then, seeing that other people also have problems, with love and compassion, we will develop the altruistic intention to become a Buddha so that we will be capable of helping others most effectively. To do this, we must develop the wisdom that understands the true nature of ourselves and other phenomena. This eliminates all false projections. And finally, the essence of Buddhism is taking refuge in the three jewels. The three jewels are the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Taking refuge means we are relying on these things to inspire and guide us toward a more awakened life. The Buddha is the historical figure who founded Buddhism, but also it's our own innate potential for awakening that is within us. The Dharma represents the teachings of the Buddha and whatever measures we're taking to continue to develop our awakening. The Sangha is the community, those other people we are practicing Buddhism with. We rely on these three things to keep us on the path and keep us motivated to continue. Thupten Chodron says, When people take refuge, they clarify to themselves what direction they are taking in life, who is guiding them, and who their companions are on the path. Who was the Buddha? The Buddha is the historical figure who is credited with creating the faith tradition that we call Buddhism. And again, in her book, Buddhism for Beginners, Thupten Chodron describes the Buddha as a human being who lived 2,500 years ago and who cleansed his mind of all defilements and developed all of his potential. That sounds really heavy. He fully cleansed his mind and reached his full potential. It sounds like a lot, but this fact is so important to the story. He was a person. He was not a spirit. He was not a god. He was not an angel. He was not even a divine hero. He was a person. He was a very wise and a very determined person, but he was not fundamentally different than you or me. So it's with that in mind that we can all do what he did. This is something we can aspire to. We are encouraged to study the Buddha's teachings and to try them out. We are not told, do these practices because I said so, but rather to try them out. Then we can develop faith in them. We can cleanse our minds and reach our full potential. Thupten Chodron goes on to say, all beings have the potential to become Buddhas. For all of our minds are innately pure. At the present, they are clouded by disturbing attitudes, negative emotions, and contaminated actions. Through consistent practice, we can remove these defilements from our mind streams and nourish the seeds of the beautiful potentials we have. Thus, each of us can become a Buddha when this process of purification and growth is complete. So you get there by realizing you're already there. Our minds are pure. We have what's called Buddha nature. We only have these things in the way, these defilements in the way like clouds in the sky, and we're working to see through the clouds to manifest our true nature. That's what the Buddha did. Our path depends on the Buddha showing us the way, but also on our efforts. Teachers point the way, but we must walk the path ourselves. That's what it comes down to. We must walk the path ourselves. So um, that's my talk for the day. And I hope this talk about some of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism has been helpful. Thank you for listening and have a good day.